no rain, and you couldn't pay your bills. So you lost your farm. Okay, due to poverty. In the 50th year, the heritage would come back to its rightful owner. Okay, does that make sense? And the third thing is that the land was to be at rest in this year. There would be no crops planted. Now, I, I want you to know something I just read. Well, Shannon, if you could back up to 18 for me. I noticed this as I was studying. Believe it or not, I don't have a whole lot left. Of course, I'm just now getting to the good part. Everything mentioned here. Broken hearted. How many of you have ever broke your own heart? The other couple say they have. For the most part, somebody else does it for us. Right? And we're not talking when I talk about when I talk about physically, like somebody saying I bumped my shin and bruised myself, I'm talking about the way these these are talking about the way it affects our psyche, brother David, the way it affects our spirit. Uh, deliverance to the captive. Who, who holds himself captive? Okay. Generally, there's somebody else involved. There's another factor that is coming into place. And recovering of sight to the blind, you've been imprisoned in the darkness, been blinded in the darkness. And many times, the, the gist of what this is saying, many times it's because, like Lewis told me at the boys' ranch, Lewis Holmes, I preached about it before. I called him in the office, brother, brother, brother Billy, and he said, my grandpa wasn't no good. My daddy wasn't no good. And none of the homes has ever been any good. I will be no good either. Okay, that, that's a true story. I'm not making it up. That's a true story. Okay? Can I tell you that that's blindness? That's not seeing clearly. That's blindness. Everything mentioned here generally occurs from an outside influence. Person, circumstance, disease, etc. Generally, everything here occurs with an outside influence. And it's things that are generally, generally beyond our control. Nobody, nobody, I don't know anybody. If there's somebody like this, I don't really want to know them. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, I'm going to see what I can do to get my heart broken. Huh? I'm going to see what I can do to get my feelings hurt today. Just give me a couple of hours. I'll, 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 I'll get somewhere with somebody. Nobody wants to do that. Okay? So you see what I'm saying is, is most of these things that he's talking about here are a result, not necessarily of our bad decisions, but of things that are beyond our control. Okay? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now verse number 20. And he closed the book. Remember I told you about that one. He gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Okay. I've got to ask this question. I ask myself today, why? Why does the Bible point out so strongly, Brother David, that they're all focused on Jesus. He's through reading. He's closed the book, put it up. That means his part's over. For the most part. Okay? They've heard the word read countless times. Jesus, at this point, has a bit of a reputation as somebody that you want to be around. But the eyes of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. They, he still kept their attention. Now, I, I want to let you understand something here, too. The Word of God was so precious. All right? The Word of God was so precious that there was never any danger of folks being irreverent or disrespectful when the Word of God was being read. It was something that they, that they hung on every word just, just to hear it read, which, which could be a negative of the great printing press. Because the, the Bible has become so, 
so uh, accessible. It's just, I, I read somewhere that like 94 percent, even in this crazy age that we live in, that 90 something percent of all households still have a Bible in them. You know, I mean, that's a pretty good percentage. Just way up there, Brother David. I, I've seen Brother John and I have worked in people's houses, and, and you go into somebody's house and they darken the door of a church, and you know, in, in a hundred years, but there'll be a Bible laid somewhere. Maybe on a shelf, but the Bible is just so common now. But I'm going to let you know something. The Bible, just because we are so accustomed to it, just because we crack it open and read it any time we want to, we've got it on our phone, we've got it on our iPad, I've got a half a dozen of them in there. We've got so many Bibles that we had a cleanup day one time, and there were several of them that tore all the pieces, and nobody could figure out what to do with them. Do you throw them away, or do you burn them, or, or what do you do with them? We, we just got them laying around everywhere. When we, when we, we used to have Bibles laying around, so-and-so yeah. plus so-and-so. Yeah. <laughs> right? I'll show you some of them. I got some of them in there on my shelf. Thank goodness my handwriting's so nasty you can't tell it was me. <laughs> now they're all looking at Jesus. I, I know it's been a little slow tonight, but what I'm about to, what I think that I'm about to share with us. That's, that's the thing, Brother Billy, is when I talk about missed opportunities, just because it's, I've heard people say before about preaching over the same thing over and over again. You know, I've been hearing that all my life. I've heard that all my life. I, I like it, Brother David, when I, when I read a text that people can quote it back. That's not a, a slam to me. That's a good thing. That's a positive. Okay? Now, now don't you get this. I, I'm not really sure how it's going to fall out, but I want you to get this. Next verse. 21. And he began to say unto them, He ain't reading the Bible no more. Okay? He's not reading the Bible anymore. Alright? He's done. He, he's folded it up and gave it back. And now Jesus is speaking. And he says, Unto them, back up, man, and finish all up. This day. Now it's the Sabbath day. It is church day. Regular church day. And other than the fact that they have a visiting minister whose name is Jesus, who's back home from Capernaum, because Capernaum was his hometown as an adult. Alright? Jesus is back home. He's reading the word. But it's the same word they hear. It's the same word that they have heard read countless times. It is the same word. It's in there right now, but it's the same word that their great, great, great grandma heard read. Their great, great, great grandpa heard read. Brother, Brother Rice, over and over and over again, they've heard the same word read. And Jesus just read the same thing they've always been hearing. But then he says, this Dead. He ain't talking about that age. He's not talking about their particular area. He says today while we're here and the reason I know that look what he says is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. So it was them that were hearing the reading of the word. All of a sudden things are different. The Jews, even today, even today. Man, I remember my prayer. We got missionaries that send out an email one of them that ISIS has come to the town that they're in. And uh, they're going door to door. And they're asking them if they're a Christian. If they say they are, today, it's happening today, as we speak. They're asking them if they are, they're killing every one of their kids. It's being done in a whole city today. They're beheading every one of their children and leaving the parents there. All because, and so far, every one of them had said, yes, we're Christian. Yes, we believe in Jesus. 
and they had killed them. They said, we pray the United Nations had evacuated the city. That was the Because of Christianity. Our missionary was asking for everybody to please pray. And every time I went over it, I prayed, God have mercy on them. God have mercy on them. That's why, that's why we cannot we cannot let opportunities like this right here go by. Because I'm going to get something that's going to give me strength, that's going to encourage me, that's going to give me boldness, that's going to help me make it to heaven, help me be more effective in my walk with God. Because everything that happens over there, it's just, we're just a little behind. Matter of fact, I'm hearing, of course, you can't put any stock in the news, but I'm hearing there's a great number of them over here already. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. The Jews, what I was about to say, the Jews are an entire body of people that only exists due to the whole of the scripture being fulfilled. Right? Hey, what did he tell Abraham? I'll make you see as the stars of the heaven and the sand of the seashore. Okay? In thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. They don't believe that was Jesus. They're today still waiting on the fulfillment of that prophecy. But Jesus tells them it's something that, that reaches into their life, something that, that, that uh, uh, dictates their actions. That's why they tried to smash down Jesus, because he didn't fit their criteria of the fulfillment of prophecy. But he says, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. I don't want to know. And that'll be the end. Yes, sir. It's a statement. I'm about to show you something. <coughs> Jesus came out of the wilderness in the power of the Spirit. Jesus reads, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, which is how it's written in Isaiah in the first person. Jesus speaks it in the first person. The Spirit of the Lord, please stay with me just for a few minutes. Somebody tell me what time is it? Says. 
which is told to us in John chapter number 1 and verse number 14. The Word was made flesh. The plan of God was made flesh and it's coming into action. But get this. This was just a Sabbath day. It was just like any other day. 